Good morning, everyone. How is everybody today? Good? All right. Let's give the Lord a round of applause for another day. Amen? <laughs> this is the preparation for worship. Heavenly Father, we ask you to restore us. O oh Lord God of hosts, cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here as we worship. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. So if you want to get up and welcome each other and give each other a handshake and a hug, let's do it. We want to see everybody wants to see Jesus lifted high. That's right. Take two, the worship team. Open us up in prayer. They should have moved the time ahead, not behind. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Good morning.
morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. blessing of us so far. This is uh, the call to assembly. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who makes us holy by accepting Yahweh Jesus and gives us the mitzvah of hearing the sound of the shofar. You want to put it on? All right. <laughs> I hope you're looking at the screen behind me, not me. I, I'm, I look didn't do it. I'm looking at both. Oh, there we go. There we Let's go. wish Ross and Chris happy anniversary. Yay! Amen. Um, Christy, do you have an announcement? No children's church today. No children's church today. Okay, because of communion. Uh, Yvette, do you have any announcements? Okay, so there is a mistake there. Okay, anyways, um, Thanksgiving dinner will be November 21st. Now we start at 1130 with a devotional. Then we go into our feeding at 12. Usually we will only do it for an hour, but because it's the holiday, we will go till 2. Okay, um, for this, I am... Um, I appreciate all donations, I really do, because we have really been blessed, not by, just, not just by this church, but other churches, other people. You know, God has always been good. He's always blessed this church. I would like to ask, if you can, I know many of you give a monetary donation, but I feel, and God feels like, if you could do that extra little step, if you can, to go and get something for this dinner yourself. You know, it's so easy to ask somebody else to do it or to give a monetary thing. But believe me when I say, when you take that little bit of extra step, it, it just kind of gives you, I don't know, that kind of feeling like, look, this is what I'm doing. You're, yeah, you're definitely part of it. You're part of God's plan. And we should all know that God puts it in our hearts, not just to provide the means, but the way. You know, and it, you know, my kids used to always make that statement. Hey, mom, can you make us a sandwich? Come on now, guys. You can't make your own sandwich? They'd say, but mom, we don't do it. We don't do it with love 
you do. You know, um, that's what I'm saying. Like, this particular occasion, it doesn't fall on Thanksgiving. There have been times in the past, like on Christmas, for instance, it fell on Christmas Day, which was even much more of a joy because we actually did it for the Lord on the Lord's Day. You know, but whoever can make it, this is open to everybody. And what better way to give thanks to the Lord than to fellowship with somebody you normally wouldn't do it with? You know, and I have one more announcement. I'm trying not to. I didn't announce it last week because um, I wanted to make sure the family was um, notified prior to doing it. But one of our uh, fellow homeless people passed away last Friday. Um, he was struggling, um, but he did pass away, and his name was Ray Howard. We had said prayers in the past for him, but he has passed. The one thing that came out of it that was a good thing was he was reunited with his son prior to this happening. And that's about all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Um. <laughs> oh, our roof fund is up to eight thousand five hundred fifty-seven dollars and fifty cents. Wow. So we're getting there. All right. Well, will the ladies, or uh, Barbara? Oh, yeah, we have a three-minute uh, council, church council meeting right after service. So just to let all you count, uh, church council members know. Anybody else have an announcement? No? Okay. Those ladies or, oh, November 11th, that's right. So we are in partnership with Family Service in Redlands. Uh, they, they're they a big part of how they donate and help us with clothing, and we help them out and back and forth. <coughs> November 11th is their annual uh, volunteer where they have their food drive. Uh, no, last year Christy went with us and Kathleen. And what, we th what they did is they, they have people from all over the neighborhood drive up, drop off their canned foods, and then we distribute them out according to date and what it is, and then they take the newer stuff and palletize it, put it away, and then bring the stuff that's ready to go up to the front so it's ready for distribution. So it's a big help. Um, you could be bagging. You could be just picking up the plastic bags. Um, I don't know. Everything. There's, there's always something to do. So that'll be at November 11th at 10 a.m. if you're available. It'll be at the Family Service on Stewart Street at 10 a.m. Okay? You're welcome. <laughs> and this Monday is our church council meeting, uh, the 13th. Right? Yeah, it's the 13th. No, it's the following Monday. Well, the second Monday of the month. Yeah. <laughs> so... Big John brought it to my attention that uh, Faith Chapel is having, what is it, a men's breakfast? So I would like to invite you gentlemen, instead of meeting in Abbey's this time, what if we head down to Faith Chapel and go fellowship with our other brothers yeah. down there? It's at 8 a.m.? 8 a.m. So we'll head down there and we'll fellowship with them. Yeah. We'll, we'll crash their party, you know what I mean? <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, it's a Saturday. November 18th at 8 a.m. at Faith Chapel here on, uh, what is that? What is it? Agate. On Agate Street, yeah. right? Yeah. Right around the corner yeah. on Agate Street. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Will the ladies or gentlemen who are going to help with the offering please come forward?
Thank you. Would you bow your hearts with us? Heavenly Father, we come again and thank you for another beautiful day you brought to us, Lord. And we thank you that we have this opportunity to gather here together. And that we, this offering this that we give back to you, Lord, that will be f used to further your your, your foundation, your, your church here, Lord. Um, just thank you so much that we can give what we can. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see, and I saw, and behold, a white horse. There's a man going around, and he's taking names. And he decides who to free and who to blame. Everybody won't be treated all the same. There'll be a golden ladder reaching down when the man comes around. Now the hairs on your arm, they will stand up at the terror in each sip and in each sup. Will you partake of that last offered cup? Or disappear into the potter's ground When the man comes around Hear the trumpets, hear the pipers One hundred million angels singing Multitudes are marching to that big kettle drum Voices calling, voices crying some are born and some are dying. It's Alpha and Omega Kingdom come. And the whirlwind is in the thorn tree. And the virgins are all trimming their wicks. And the whirlwind is in the thorn tree. It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Till Armageddon, no salam, no shalom. Then the father hand shall call his chickens home. The wise men, they'll bow down before the throne. And at his feet, they'll cast their golden crowns. When the man comes around, whoever is unjust, let him be unjust still. Whoever is righteous, let him be righteous still. Whoever is filthy, let him be filthy still. Now listen to those words long written down. When the man comes around. Hear the trumpets, hear the pipers. One hundred million angels singing. Multitudes are marching to that big kettle drum. Voices call in, voices crying. Now some are born and some are dying. It's Alpha and Omega Kingdom. And the whirlwind is in the thorn tree. The virgins are all trimming their wicks. And the whirlwind is in the thorn tree. It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. In measure hundred weight and penny pound. When the man comes around. In measure hundred weight and penny pound. When the man comes around. We prayed before about technical difficulties. Here we go. <laughs> Minimal. Minimal. No, no, no. Can we have the gentlemen who are going to help with the communion please come on up?
I'm going to be reading from the book of Hebrews, chapter 1. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For to which of the angels did he ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you? And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. But when he brings the first when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels he says, Who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire? But to the Son he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness in th is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. We are here celebrating this morning what the Lord has done for us on the cross. And it is through his shed blood that we have our life today, a new life in Christ. And he is sitting at the right hand of the Father right now interceding for us. He has reconciled us through his blood by sending his one and only begotten son that whosoever shall call on him shall believe in him and surrender their life to him might have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Warren, will you please uh, bless the bread? Heavenly Father, it is just with a humbling heart that we come before you and thank you so much that you sent your only son here to atone for our sins, Lord, that he gave up his life that we may have eternal life. There's no way we can thank you, but we do thank you, Lord, for what you did. Amen. Mr. Bird. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit in our life. I thank you today that, that I know the truth, and that is they did not take his life by the cruelty of man, but you gave your life freely. Amen. It was by that life that we knew we now share this new life in Christ. And Father in heaven, as we lift that cup, let us help us. May we remember this new life that we all share together with you and in your spirit. I thank you, Father in heaven, for all these good things for me. In Jesus' name I pray. As the gentlemen are passing out the elements, take this opportunity, as it tells us in Corinthians that if there is something in your heart, anything in your heart that you need to ask the Lord for forgiveness for before you participate in communion, ask the Lord for that forgiveness, that you come to him with a clean heart and an open mind. Amen?
And that evening when the Lord and the disciples were celebrating and Jesus told them what he was going to do for them, he lifted up that bread as an illustration and said to them, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. And Lord, we do remember you that you freely gave your life that we would have life. Please eat you all. In the same manner, he lifted up the cup and he blessed it. And he said, this is my blood that was shed for the remission of your sins. As often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. And Lord, we recognize that it is through your shed blood that reconciles us to our heavenly father. We love you, Lord. Please drink, y'all. Give the Lord a round of applause. <laughs> Mr. Jimmy, offer a prayer for the sick and needy. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Anyway, okay. Good morning. I just want you guys to know that another day I'm full of joy, love, peace, and I get a little bit of understanding this morning, so I feel like I'm on the right track. Um, I just want you guys to know that this world is all messed up, but the, but the word, the word said it would be. The word that we read and that we believe in said that it would be like this. It would be like the days of Noah. So don't be surprised. But we do have a job. We got to pray for these crazy things going on. We got to pray for peace. We got to pray for healing of our planet and our government and our just our families, everything like that that's going on. Um, just FYI, we got praise reports. Um, Piper had a wonderful birthday. And just like expected, the, she went from 12 to 30. <laughs> <laughs> no, but she had a wonderful time, and she, she with me, we are very grateful ever for everybody that helped us. Millie, thank you so much. She was very, very, very helpful to me being um, the parent that I am. And I thank you for that. <laughs> All you women, I thank you for your help with my daughter. So just that, that being said. And uh, many of you will be getting a card from Piper saying thank you as well. Um, we've had a very busy week. We're still trying to calm down from last week. Ever since we ordered that cake Thursday, we were just in a <laughs> whirlwind, you know. And um, another praise report, my car passed smog. <laughs> 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 I just want you to know the things that we pray for get answered, man. And that's, you know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, so, and we do want to lift up. Uh, family members from our church, uh, Terry Lozano is still um, in recovery home. We need to lift her up. If you want to know where she is, ask the pastor later. If you want to probably go by and see her or whatever, you, you know, that kind of thing. And there are other people, um, um, Ken and uh, Yuman, they have a family member who is in a car accident down here on Lagonia and uh, Lincoln. Car ran the stop sign and, and, and hit her car and crushed her whole body. Amazing. She's still here with us wow. because we have an amazing God, right? Yeah. 
So we want to keep her in prayers. It's going to be a long recovery. We know if anybody's ever been in a car accident with any situations, you know, that's we have a few members here that were in an awful car accident. My mom was in an awful car accident. But the Lord handles these things for us. But he wants us to be obedient. He wants us to be diligent. He wants us to seek him every day. So if you would bow your hearts and heads with me, we will pray for these many things that need our prayer. In Jesus' name, I'm starting this prayer off that I would like you to know, Lord God, that this is a church that loves you. We are a church that fear you. We are a church that respect you, and we go by what you tell us to do, Lord God. Today, we lift up all those that are hurting and suffering, not only in this little church in this little town, but all over the world, Lord God. We lift up everybody that is struggling to find hope in their life today, Lord God. Help them turn to you, Lord. Help us be the example that leads them to you, Lord God, in their midst of darkness and suffering, Lord God. We want to lift up those out there that are struggling with some kind of um, distraction, drugs, alcohol, gambling, sex addicts, all those kind of things, Lord God, that distract the human soul from loving you and others, Lord God. We want to lift those things up and put them down in your name, Lord God. Help us to focus and shut off the TV each and every day. Help us to think about these things that we discussed today in church. Not just me, but everybody. We talk and we fellowship and we learn more and more about each other. Help us lift each other up. Help us to praise each other as well. And always give you the glory for everything that happens, Lord God. Let us not forget where our power comes from, Lord God. Thank you so much today, Lord God, for what you're going to do tomorrow, Lord God. I thank you for the many miracles you've done in my life and in this church. And we sit in patient waiting for many, many more. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, for those that want to stand, stand. For those that want to sit, sit. Let's praise the Lord. Hey, Susan. Hi, Yvonne. I hear you found something. Oh, I found something. What'd you find? I found a new way of living. Ooh, let's sing it.
So the song, Even So Come, comes from Revelation 22, 7, 12. The Lord is returning soon. The song, Even So Come, is a reminder that Jesus Christ will be returning soon. This time, as the bridegroom, we the church are his bride. <coughs> Our job is to be ready, preparing ourselves for his return by evangelizing and sharing the gospel message of love with everyone.
creation, all of the earth, make straight a highway, path for the Lord. Jesus is coming soon. Let's give the Lord a round of applause, amen? And let's thank our worship team for all the hard work. <laughs> How, uh, a, round, a, round of, a round of applause? All right. <laughs> I 
All right, we're in our series of going through the Psalms. Um, we're not quite dissecting them, but we're enjoying them, going through our trip through the Psalms. We are in Psalm 78 and 80 this week. I remember these Psalms are really hymnals, Israel's hymnals, and our hymnals too. Um, but you can go through the Psalms, and it's recommended you go at least 14 times through each of the Psalms. Uh, if you're reading a certain Psalm, go through it, and you get more and more and more out of it. So me, during my week, I read it through over and over and over again. Uh, I'll go for my walk and take my little little pocket one and as I'm walking, meditate on each one and just let the Holy Spirit speak to me. Um, kind of like what Charles Stanley used to do. I didn't know he used to do that till after he passed away and he shared his testimony. So it was neat to know that I'm not the only one that does that. Um, but the Psalms, it's just, they could be, to, they can speak about the past, the present, and be something very personal. Because we can learn a lot about Israel's history. The scriptures tells us that it is for our benefit that we learn from the past. That we could apply it to our lives today and cherish that. So it can be for past, present, and personal. You can make a personal application out of this. As you should through all of God's word. To make it personal. Amen? Bow your hearts with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we bless you to be able to gather here today. And Lord, we just ask that you remove everything from inside of us that displeases you in this moment, Lord. That we make room for you. And we welcome your Ruach HaKodesh, your Holy Spirit, Lord. To lead each heart, to lead each mind, to open up each heart, each mind to your word, Lord. Bless us with the full nourishment of your word, Lord. Strengthen us in your word. Instruct us through the word, Lord. By the power of your Holy Spirit, have full authority in this moment as we get into your word, Lord. Give us a hunger to want to know you more. Give us a hunger for your word. Give us that hunger, Lord, that we would search the scriptures daily to find truth. And we ask that you please, Lord, help us to retain what we learn here this morning, what we hear this morning, to be able to apply it to our lives as well as in a loving way, help others apply it to their lives, Lord, to give hope to a broken world, Lord, to give hope to a dying world, Lord, that we can share the life of Christ, that we can share that gift of salvation, Lord, the gift of a new life. And we ask all this in the precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Yahweh HaMashiach, Jesus, our Christ. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. All right, Psalm 79. So on the historical sense, you can examine the last few chapters of the book of Jeremiah, which it tells you the history of here of what the writer, Asaph, was writing to about his experience being at Jeremiah's right hand in when Jerusalem was taken captive by the Babylonians. And their experience, the loss of what happened to that temple, what happened to the people. And so him and Asaph are there, and Asaph is the one writing the experiences. It's a testimony of what happened. You could also read about this too, and it, it's, it's in the book of Lamentations where you get like the real meat of the, the brokenness and the heart and the pain of what happened and how they're experiencing this. So here is like a summary for us here in Psalm 79. But it's not only that. For us as a church, as the body of Christ, as your body is the temple of the living God, it's in those times when we turn from the Lord and walk to our own selfish ways when we go to idolatry. In other words, saying idolatry, meaning you put everything else 
in front of God instead of God having be in the center of your life. That is idolatry. And we all fall into it. You know? Sometimes we're not aware of it. Sometimes we willingly go after it because we still battle with that one thing called the flesh. And it's something we're going to deal with all the time, either until the time we're raptured up or until the time then you pass away, one or the other, or the Lord returns. But he has given us his power, his Holy Spirit. He removed that power by nailing it to the cross. And he has given you the Holy Spirit, which gives you power over a sinful lifestyle. Amen? Verse 1, Psalm 79, says, O God, the nations have come into your inheritance, your holy temple they have defiled. They have laid Jerusalem in heaps, the dead bodies of your servants they have given as food for the birds of the heavens. The flesh of your saints to the boat, to the beast of the earth, their blood they have shed like water all around Jerusalem, and there was none to bury them. Man, that's pretty devastating, right? How many of you have ever felt that conviction of the Holy Spirit when your temple has been defiled? Amen? Right? Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 3 says it like this. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. These Israelites had made a vow to the Lord. When they were on Mount Sinai, they said, we will do everything you say. They made a commitment. As we do today, when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, we say, Lord, we will follow you no matter what. Right? But then they fell into idolatry. They started worshiping God, but wanting to worship worldly things too as well. And they didn't keep the Sabbaths for the land. You see, they were, out, they were required to let the land rest. Every seven years, they had to not plow the land and let the land rest. In modern science, we have found that out, that it's necessary. Otherwise, you over-cultivate that land, and it's no good. But God tells them in Exodus that they should have no other gods before me. Our God is a jealous God. Amen? Verse 4, we have become a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and derision to those who are around us. Have you ever felt when you've decided to live your own life, your own way, and then you feel that conviction of the Holy Spirit, and you start to say, well, man, there goes my testimony that I had. I have ruined my testimony, right? You were walking with the Lord. You ruined the testimony. And there comes the talk, right? Your neighbors would say, I thought you were a Christian. I thought you were a Christian, right? Because people will talk. People will talk. And it's not just people, but the book of Hebrews tells us we have a whole cloud of witnesses Watching us, good and bad witnesses, watching us, waiting for our next move, right? A testimony is an outward sign of true worship. We got to walk the walk and not just talk the talk, amen? He says, we have become a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and derision to those who are around us. Verse 5 says, How long, Lord, will you be angry forever? Will your jealousy burn like fire? 
You ever felt a fire inside of you when you know you haven't done exactly what the Lord has asked you to do? When you know that your choices now have consequences and you feel that fire, right? Deuteronomy 4.24 says it like this, For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. Our God is very jealous because he loves you so much. He loves you so much that he gave his son to die on the cross to redeem you. To redeem you. To bring you back to him. Verse 6 says, Pour out your wrath on the nations that do not know you and on the kingdoms that do not call on your name. For they have devoured Jacob and laid waste his dwelling place. Oh, do not remember former iniquities against us. Let your tender mercies come speedily to us, to meet us. He says, oh, do not remember former iniquities against us. Let your tender mercies come speedily to us. How many of you know that the, that the enemy is a liar? Amen? We've gone to the Lord. We've asked for forgiveness. We start walking towards where God wants us to walk. Then there comes the whispers. Hey, I remember what you did. Hey, you remember that? Right? Here the psalmist is saying, Do not remember former iniquities against us. Let your tender mercies come speedily. How many times do we feel distant from God because we have a strayed and we want the Lord to come now? We need that help now. We need that healing now. We need that encouragement now. We need to be stable on solid ground. Amen? It's like I'm sinking like Peter, sinking in the water and says, Lord, save me. We want that quickly. And if you want that quickly, if you feel that desire to want his mercy now, it is because you are a child of God. That is evidence that you are a child of God, that you are saved, that you belong to God, and you're feeling really out of place right now. And you need the Lord to work fast to redeem you back to him. And it, all it takes is a prayer, a crying out. Lord, please don't remember what I did. I ask for forgiveness. Please let it go. Help me to let it go. Amen? How many of you know that when you accepted Jesus Christ, you got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all three in one, the moment you confess them as Lord and Savior, and he gives you that power, and all you need to do is cry out and say, Lord, give me the power to forget that and move towards your will. Amen? Lamentations 3, 32 says, Though he causes grief, yet he will show compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. Amen? There is grief in misbehavior. There is grief in wrong choices. There is grief in selfish decisions. Because we didn't make that faith choice. But the Lord is merciful. The Lord is merciful. Don't make the mistake of becoming a hermit and saying, oh, no, I can't, I can't go back to you, Lord. Don't listen to all the lies of the enemy that he puts in your ear. No. Shove it aside. Raise your hand and say, Lord, here I am. Be merciful to me. And he will act speedily. Ask for that prayer. Lamentations 3.22 says, For the Lord's mercies, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because, he, because his compassions fail not. His compassions fail not. Amen? We serve a merciful God who loves us like a loving father. How many of you know that you have the right through the blood of Jesus Christ to Barge right into that throne room of heaven and said, Lord, here I come boldly. 
I need you, Lord. You have a right to that because you're a child of God. Jesus Christ paid the price with his own blood that you can walk into the throne room of heaven and say, Lord, I need you. I need you to be merciful to me. Amen? Verse 9. Help us, O God of our salvation, for the glory of your name. How many of you ever practiced that before? Lord, I am stuck in a bind, and I really messed up this time, and man, <laughs> I'm really frustrated. But for your name's sake, for your name's sake, that you would be glorified, help me out in this situation. Amen? How many know that God holds up his word above all things? And he would love it if you would say, Lord, for your name's sake, help me out here to get back on track. Amen? This is powerful here. Help us, O God of our salvation. The word is Yeshua. Salvation. It also means help. Help. Yeshua. For the glory of your name. And deliver us and provide atonement for our sins. For your name's sake. Has God provided atonement for our sins? His name is Jesus Christ. Amen? All those Old Testament saints, and we can rely on the book of Hebrews chapter 11, that all those Old Testament saints had atonement provided for them by faith. By faith. Because when... They died, they went into a compartment called Sheol. It had God's people on this side, a great gulf, and then those who did not know God on that side. But when the Lord Jesus gave his life, and he went down, took them from Sheol, and when he resurrected, he took them with him. Because they had faith. They believed in the Messiah, they believed in that coming king, they believed and they had faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that he would provide atonement. One of the oldest books in the Bible, Job, chapter 19, where Job says, For I know my Redeemer lives. And in my flesh, though this flesh will die, in my flesh, I will see my Redeemer. Amen? He knew about the Redeemer. Amen? Amen? Verse 10, why should the nations say, where is their God? Let there be known among the nations in your sight the avenging of the blood of your servants which has been shed. How many of you guys ever experienced when you've fallen and you're trying to get back up and you hear say, well, where was your God? Where was your God? That's a reality. Where is your God? Right? Where is your God, the nations say? And these people, this psalmist is saying, why should they say that? Why should they say that? You know that the enemy works in people's lives to discourage you? Satan will tell you this. You have disappointed God too many times. Give up. Have you ever felt that before? Where the enemy will whisper in your ear, just give up. You've, you've failed too many times. This isn't for you. Maybe you're not cut out for this. Maybe you're not strong enough. Maybe you're not smart enough. Maybe you're not faithful enough. Right? But God, in his word, and in through his spirit, God says, I knew everything you would do before you were born, and I still called you. I'm not finished with you. Amen? And in his word, it tells us like this, in Philippians 1.6, says it like this, Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen? 
Being confident. He will complete it, whether it's through the resurrection, or he will complete it, whether when he comes to set up his kingdom here on earth and we rule and reign with him. Right now, you're still under construction. <laughs> I'm under construction. And let me tell you, it's not a pretty sight. <laughs> Watch out for the nails and the boards and the plaster and the tacks and tape. It's a mess, but it's God's mess, and it's beautiful. His spirit is inside of me, constructing me. His spirit is inside of you, constructing you. Molding you and shaping you like clay into the image of his one and only begotten son. Amen? The true definition of a Christian is being Christ-like. Amen? Christ-like. Your focus should be on making sure that your walk is like Christ. Your talk is like Christ. Your heart is like Christ. Your attitude is like Christ. When those storms come, you can say, be still. Because my God is bigger than that storm. Amen? You have the authority. You have that power to speak action. You have it inside of you. To turn that life around. He's given you everything that he's given you. He's also, everything that was given to him, he gives it to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So what can bring us from that very low area in life? Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Amen? The moment you accepted Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit was given to you. You received that power. You know? Once in a while, we got to dust it off. <laughs> Maybe give it a few tugs. <laughs> it hasn't been turned on in a while. <laughs> right? But once it gets started... Boy, is it loud. Boy, is it powerful. Boy, can it chop. Right? It can make the way. And that power lives in you. We need to exercise it, not be lazy about it. Amen? Verse 11. The groanings of the prisoner come before you. According to the greatness of your power, preserve those who are appointed to die. You know that you can preserve someone from dying by praying for them? Right? How many times have I heard that, oh, this person's a lost cause, they're going to die. Or I've been told that too, you keep going the way you go, you're going to die. I even thought it myself, living in the world, living in sinful lifestyle. It's like, Lord, if, I don't, if you don't help me out, I'm going to die. But we can preserve that by prayer, the power of prayer. Amen? You ever notice someone that you love struggling so bad that it looks like they're going to die? <laughs> right? You can bring them life by prayer. You can revive that person by prayer. Amen? Verse 12. And return to our neighbors sevenfold into their bosom the reproach with which they have reproached you, O Lord. Sometimes we're going to see those that oppose us get what's coming to them. Amen? And that's when we really need to pray for our enemies. We need to pray for those that come against us. We need to love our enemies and pray for our enemies. God, God accomplishes what he accomplishes by letting the sin deal with the sin. 
And you'll witness that in your, in your walk, in your life. When you pray for someone, you will see that sin deal with the sin that they're in. It'll backfire. Big time. But we need to keep them in prayer. You know, I think about what's going on with Israel and Hamas, right? Hamas is a terrorist group. The Apostle Paul was a terrorist. He was terrorizing the church. And I'm pretty sure there was somebody who was praying for the Apostle Paul. Because when he changed his ways and gave his life to Christ, it turned out pretty good for him and for the rest of the church. Amen? So therefore, we need to pray for those that persecute us, those that come against us. Amen? Prime example. Verse 13. So we, your people and sheep of your pasture, will give you thanks forever. We will show forth your praise to all generations. Psalm 80. Psalm 80 is that lily in the valley, right? That lily in the desert, the shepherd of Israel. It's a prayer of restoration. Verse 1 says, Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who dwell between the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir up your strength and come and save us. Now, I want to share with you something of the reason why it includes Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. See, during this time when Jerusalem was broken down, the nation was divided. You had Ephraim leading the northern kingdom who turned to idolatry. You had Benjamin and Manasseh in the southern kingdom who were still trying to be faithful to God, although they also <laughs> were in their ways too. But in this prayer of restoration, they're coming together in unity. Although they had been split apart, they're coming together in unity. There must be unity in the church in order to come against the enemy. There must be fellowship in our church. There must be gathering of the people in a, in a corporate prayer, right? We share each other's needs. We give each other's prayer requests. But there must be corporate prayer. When we come together as one body in Christ, it stirs up his strength. We need to practice fellowship in our fellowship. What do I mean by that? Well, there's fellowship between us, but there's followship. In other words, following our shepherd. Making him first, making him the one that we follow and being in unity in that fellowship. Amen? There's got to be unity. Verse 3. Restore us, O God, cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry against the prayer of your people? You ever wondered why God prolongs so long to answer a prayer? Man, it takes a long time sometimes, you know. But God is good, and he's a good God, and he answers prayer in his timing. The thing that should be important to us is that we are busy praying and focusing on who God is and not on our situation. Amen? Verse 5. You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them tears to drink in great measure. Psalm 56, 8 and 9 says it like this. You number my wanderings, put my tears into your bottle. Are they not written in your book? When I cry to you, then my enemies will turn back. This I know because God is for me. Sounds kind of like Romans 8, huh? If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen? God collects every single tear you shed in a bottle, in a book of remembrance. He remembers every time your heart breaks. 
He remembers every time you're frustrated and stressed to the point, to that breaking point. And he remembers it. But God is for us, not against us. Amen? Verse 6. You have made us strife with to our neighbors, and our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. You have brought a vine out of Egypt, and cast out the nations and planted it. Here we have a summary a summary of God's vineyard, as expressed in Isaiah 5, verses 1 and 7. Verse 1 says, A song of my beloved regarding his vineyard in Isaiah 5, 1, 5 verse 1. And verse 7 says, For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are his pleasant plants. He looked for justice, but behold, oppression for righteousness, but behold, a cry for help. This here is a summary of Isaiah chapter 5, when God's speaking about that vineyard that he planted. That vineyard is the nation Israel, the beginning of his church. Here in verse 8 it says, You have brought us, brought a vine out of Egypt. You have cast out the nations and planted it. You have prepared room for it and caused it to take deep root and fill the land. The hills were covered with its shadow and the mighty setters with its bows. She sent out her bows to the sea and her branches to the river. Why have you broken down her hedges so that all who pass by the way pluck her fruit? The boar out of the woods uproots it and the wild beast of the field devours it. Return, we beseech you, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and visit this vine. What other vine do we know of that came out of Egypt? Jesus. Very good, Matt. Matthew chapter 2 tells you that Jesus had to flee into Egypt when all those firstborn children were being slaughtered. Right? He was on the run. And he had to flee to Egypt. That's where he grew up at as a kid. And he is that vine that has come out. He's also the vine. In John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. He says, I am the vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. It says he prunes. But in the original King James and some research that I did, in Jesus' days, they didn't prune the grapevines. They purged them. You know how it says in Psalm 51 when David says, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be white as snow. It's a cleansing method. So to purge a grapevine would be when these vines would be up like this and their branch hangs down low and it gets covered in mud because of the rains or the watering process. The purging would be when they would place a big rock and lift up the branches like this and the purging would be the cleansing process of cleansing off the vine so that it would produce good fruit, get that sunlight. Produce great grapes. And that's exactly what the Lord does to his children. He lifts you up. He cleanses you. And allows you to produce good fruit. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Plant. I needed that. <laughs> so he purges us. Right? Right? He purges us. Verse 3 in John 15 says, You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. It's the word of God that purges us clean and allows us to produce fruit. Amen? 
He says, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire that they are burned. You see, those little small branches from the, from the vines, those branches are good for nothing once they dry up. It's all it is is good for kindle, for making fire. Verse 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Amen? We need to ask the Lord to uplift us, to purge us clean like the way David said in Psalm 51, purge me with hyssop and make me white as snow. We need to produce that clean fruit. Amen? Verse 15 of Psalm 80. And the vineyard which your right hand is planted and the branch that you made strong for yourself, it is burned with fire, it is cut down, they perish at the rebuke of your continents. Verse 17. Now they're asking for the Messiah, their Savior, the coming king. They're saying, let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, upon the son of man, whom you made strong for yourself. Anybody know the words of that song? Put your hand in the man of the hand that stilled the waters. <laughs> Let your, put your hand in the hand of the man that calmed the seas. Take a look at yourself. So put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Amen. This is exactly what Israel is asking for. They're asking for that man. They're asking for that man. Right? They say, verse 17, Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, upon the Son of Man, whom you made strong for yourself, and check out this promise. How many of you guys made promises to the Lord? Amen? Check out their promise. Then we will turn back. Then we will not turn back from you. Revive us and we will call upon your name. Amen? Israel has not accepted the Messiah yet, but they will one day. One day they will call upon his name and say, Hey, we know you are the Lord and you're going to come and save us. Amen? Verse 19 says, Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. Amen? Bow your hearts with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we bless you, Lord, for the man of your right hand, Lord. <laughs> Such a beautiful song. Lord, we just thank you and we bless you, Lord, and we know that we are guided by your right hand, Lord Jesus Christ, who makes intercession for us daily, all day long. The Lord God never sleeps nor slumbers, Lord. And we just put ourselves into your hand, Lord, as we allow you to guide us each day. And remind us, Lord, to cry out to you, Lord, when we are in need of your mercy. In the precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Yahweh HaMashiach, Jesus our Christ, amen. amen. Love one another, pray for, and forgive one another always, and do it swiftly.